gauges, again, can be designed so that they either give us a pass or a fail. Now, when we're not actually measuring anything, like with the basic gauge R&R template, what we need to do is conduct an attribute study of the gauges and their abilities. And in here, you're going to see places to fill in things. So we have three appraisers and three trials. You could do this with two appraisers and two trials as well. And one says whatever part I measured passed, and zero says whatever part I measured failed. And then once you've conducted these trials, you're going to want to come back and actually come up with a reference value for this particular part. And what are the upper and lower spec limits for these particular parts? Now I've taken, again, the AIAG example. And here you see all the different reference values for a set of parts and whether they passed or failed. And in some of these cases, you'll see where they passed and sometimes they failed. And the code here says that this is around the upper spec, minus is around the lower spec, and X is in the sweet spot between the two goalposts of our upper and lower spec limit. If you scroll over, it'll tabulate all of this information for you. And so here you'll see that A and B agreed on which ones failed and which ones passed, and they only missed a couple of times. Same with B and C and C and A. So you get to see sort of the, the dance between the various appraisers. And then against the reference value. So in s appraiser A had 41 and 99 correct. And they had one that should have failed, but they passed, and nine that should have passed, but they failed. So this is how you start to look at and see how everybody's reading the gauge. Over here, you can see the effectiveness of all three appraisers. And overall on the system, so our miss rate was only 7%, and acceptable is over 90%. So here we've conducted an attribute gauge study and determined that, yes, our measurement process is acceptable.